thank you, Professor Kusheri. Um, I'm grateful to Sages for this kind of invitation. Now, three-dimensional printing, also known as editing, manufacturing, or rapid prototyping, is frequently described as a technical and industrial revolution which is likely to change the way we live. The manufacturing process is based on a 3D computer virtual model for the reconstruction of 3D graspable objects by the deposition of layers of materials such as plastic, ceramics, chalk, uh, uh, metals, and a number of photodynamic resins. In surgery, these 3D graspable models can be created starting from the patient's uh, um, DICOM data set uh, from CT scan or uh, MRI. The modeling of soft anatomical parts to teach anatomy was first practiced at Florence in the 16th century. The practice of molage, as it is properly called, entails the depiction of anatomy and uh, disease organ using bee wax as its primary material. In the 19th century, the practice of molage evolved into a very artistic representation of the human anatomy and its internal disorders. And models like this one became very popular uh, to teach anatomy all across Europe as a substitute of, of cadaveric bodies, uh, which became uh, uh, expensive and risky as well. Now, many of these models are still kept in uh, um, uh, museums for the history of medicine, like uh, the one we have in my own institution, the University of Pavia. There's a permanent exhibition of wax models by the Florentine uh, modeller, sculptor uh, Clemente Susini. Uh, here is an example of one of these masterpieces that combines a deep knowledge of anatomy with a true sense for the beauty of nature. So it's a combination of science and art. Now, two centuries after Clemente Susini, we are uh, trying to follow the same path in a less artistic way, uh, at least in the belief that these models can still be of some use for uh, surgeons, not just to teach anatomy, but for a number of purposes in uh, uh, medicine and in surgery. And there has been a growing interest into uh, 3D uh, printing for uh, preoperative planning in surgery, as you can see the number of papers being published over the last few years. But what are these models uh, done for? Uh, uh, you can appreciate that uh, they are mostly used for uh, solid organs and for abdominal vessels uh, as a tool to achieve a better preoperative planning and perhaps intraoperative navigation. And, and these are the reasons for this model have been produced. Uh, surgical planning, so preoperative pre planning, education and training purposes, um, better understanding of anatomy, uh, also to manufacture surgical tools as a ripen, pr rapid prototyping system, and also for uh, patient counseling. It, at my uh, home institution in the University of Pavia, we have recently established a, a clinical laboratory for 3D printing, which is called 3D4Med. And these are some examples of the uh, products that the laboratory is able to release to our uh, surgeons. Uh, these are um, um, samples of aorta for vascular surgery, uh, fractured bones for our orthopedic surgeon, then ENT surgeons are using these models too, cardiac surgeons, and of course, uh, general surgeons, as I, as I will uh, go for uh, in a while. Uh, now, pre-operative planning is the most popular use of these uh, 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 grasping models. And here's an example of a patient with an aneurysm of the splenic artery, something that would be difficult to understand uh, using conventional CT scan, it's difficult to understand the path of the feeding vessel, the path of the efferent vessels, and the, and the shape and the position of the aneurysm. And so we were able to use a model like this, which is a rigid model, to approach uh, this condition through a, uh, a robotic-assisted uh, surgery. 
and, and the surgeon can go directly to the uh, feeding vessel because he knows the position. He can bring the model with him or her in theater and use it as a navigation tool as he dissects the uh, vessels. And, and then in end-to-end -end anastomosis is done uh, of this uh, major uh, vessel. Now, these models can also be used for uh, in vitro testing of medical devices. And here's an example. Um, uh, this is a kidney for uh, life donor uh, nephrectomy for transplantation. And the problem here, the technical problem, is an early bifurcation of the artery. So if you use a stapler uh, to transect this vessel, you might end it up with two arteries for um, implantation. And in fact, it doesn't fit, uh, you know, it, it's too big, the stapler. So we decided, based on this anticipation, to go for a different way to deal with the vessel using a large um, hemolock stapler. Uh, and as you know, the hemolock cannot be used as the only method to secure the vessel, so at the end we would uh, do a running suture to secure uh, the artery at the um, um, aorta origin. Now, more recently, we have uh, embarked in the usage of a new type of printers and a new type of material. This is a soft material that uh, is very similar to the uh, real um, um, composition to the real um, uh, forces uh, of uh, anatomy. So the, the um, consistency of the material can be changed according to the uh, kidney parenchyma or to the vessels. The vessels do have a lumen, so you can use them for dissecting and suturing. What this means is another shift from simple preoperative planning to preoperative simulation. And simulation is important not just for training, but also to anticipate the technical challenge that you will face during an operation, even, even if you are an expert surgeon. And here are uh, a couple of examples. This is again a life donor nephrectomy, and this patient has two arteries, one lower pole artery and one uh, principal uh, uh, artery. So we can simulate in vitro, the day before the operation, how to fix these vessels, and then how to um, uh, do a, a, um, a um, um, surgery on the bench table to recreate one only vessel uh, for transplantation. Uh, sometimes it's an anticyte anastomosis, sometimes you can implant the two vessels uh, separately, but now we have a tool to simulate this the day before the actual surgery. And here, uh, due to the length of the vessels, we were easily able to suture uh, this, this model in vitro and to create one uh, single artery for transplantation, which is what we actually did the day after in the real, uh, in the real patient. So as a nice way to anticipate the challenge of surgery. Here's another example the last one, again, is an aneurysm of the splenic artery. Uh, little that you can say from watching the conventional CT scan, and that is the 3D virtual reconstruction. Again, uh, it, it gives you a better understanding of the anatomy, but far from this, this is a soft model that you can work on, so with a robot, in vitro, we managed to transect the vessel uh, feeding and, uh, and uh, um, efferent vessel, as we did uh, in the real situation. And then we can suture the two vessels together to reestablish the uh, supply to the spleen, and that is done in vitro as well as in vivo. And I'm sure you would appreciate the potential of this technology for uh, teaching our residents how to uh, handle uh, a patient like this in uh, a reproducible way. You can print uh, a few of these models and exercise more than one time on the same patient-specific tool. 
So remember that the key here is patient specific. We are not talking about a general simulation of the procedure, but it's the procedure that you are about to do the day after. And then we can remove and dissect the aneurysm from the posterior vein, and the same would be done in the open situation. The aneurysm is opened first to make sure there are no feeding vessels anymore, and then dissect it off the posterior vein as we did uh, with our model. So in conclusion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I do believe that in selected instances, instances so far, uh, 3D printing technology uh, is one of the best way to transfer the anatomical information from radiology to the final user, and is also helpful to simulate challenging part of the procedure you are about to do. There are still open questions. Uh, number one, uh, cost and time required to produce this model. Uh, it is currently limited, mostly limited, to solid organs and vessels, and you need a dedicated team uh, as the one have the fortune to have in, uh, in Pavia, and here are some of the people without whose help this presentation would not have been possible. Thank you. Thank you.